The reading today is taken from Mark 16, reading verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and they fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everybody. What a joy it is to be able to look out and see you all in person on today of all days. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious Father, God of love, in your power you have resurrected Jesus from the grave. Defeating death itself, you have won for us a new life in which our bond with you can never again be broken. On this Easter morning, help us to open our hearts to you afresh as we consider the implications of that most glorious day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. It has been two years since we last met in the church building to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday. Although I myself was not even here at that point, all of us have walked through the doors of the church this morning as different people than those whom we were back then. Our experiences of the pandemic alone over the past year or so have shaped us considerably. But of course, all the while, life has continued on as it does ordinarily, too. A few of us have started secondary school or university. Uh, some of us are still getting used to a new job or are settling into a well-deserved retirement. Some of us have found that our families have grown over the past year as we've become grandparents again or for the first time. But there are also those among us who have lost loved ones in recent months and who are still learning what each day looks like without a close friend or family member around. I've often found myself using the word journey as I've looked back on the past year and towards the weeks and months ahead. For this has been a long year of stages, of stops and starts, of milestones, both hopeful and tragic. A journey rarely involves a simple direct trip from point A to point B. It's usually more complex than that, with unexpected twists and turns, learning and loss experienced along the way. Looking back over the past year or two, what does your own journey up to this point look like, I wonder? Jesus' earthly ministry could certainly be described as a journey, his final days, a journey in their own right. Today we celebrate, in a sense, the destination of that journey. But we must remember that there could never have been a Resurrection Sunday without a Good Friday. There could never have been an empty tomb if not for the cross. As today we stand beside the empty tomb, its great stone rolled away, we rejoice absolutely in view of the unwavering hope and restoration that now lies ahead of us. 
But we do so without forgetting about the darkness and the cross that lies behind us. Indeed, to the contrary, we weep bittersweet tears today with the realization that they were not in vain. Often on Easter Sunday, we can very quickly forget about the journey that has brought us up to this point. We can move on swiftly in our joy and our celebration. But as our reading from Mark's Gospel this morning reminds us, Easter Sunday was still in part a day of tears and sorrow, despite being the happiest in history. For the women in the garden and the disciples in hiding, Sunday was still a day of mourning, of unanswered questions. Everything wasn't suddenly okay again at sunrise. Pain and confusion were not resolved immediately. It wasn't all singing and dancing by lunchtime. When we make the mistake of understanding the day of resurrection in this way, and it's tempting to do so, we fail to do justice to Jesus' friends, family, and followers, whom only two days before had looked up in shame and helplessness as he suffered in agony upon the cross, and on Sunday still remained uncertain and afraid. With this in mind, and as we approach 150,000 coronavirus-related deaths in our nation alone, this day just cannot be one solely of celebration. For there are many around us who do feel the very real sting of death today, just as Mary did and Peter and the other apostles on the morning of Resurrection Sunday. No, this year, today, it is vital that our words are not trivial that we don't resort to stock phrases, and that our theology of the resurrection is solid, lest we dilute the power of the amazing Easter story that many, many people desperately need to hear this year. The resurrection of Jesus in all its glorious beauty might indeed be the destination of Holy Week, but it is not the final destination of God's salvation plan in so much as it is a new beginning. As Mark's gospel leaves us on a cliffhanger, so the journey continues on. As the sun rose on Easter morning, not only did a new day break forth, but a new era, an era of hope, of life. The image of some train tracks comes to mind for me. Since Adam, the tracks of humanity have had a single course. But with the resurrection, the rails shift to a new line as the old line fades into ruin. No longer does humanity journey alone, derailed, lost on a course of their own choosing. Now, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit journey with us, guiding us through the remainder of this chapter and into a new one. For now... Sin and suffering do still have a place in our world, but not the one that they once had. No longer do they have the same hold on us, do they overcome us. For into the midst of our suffering, God himself has entered through Christ. And in his death and his resurrection, Jesus has ensured that our days of suffering are numbered. Ahead, God waits for us at the doors to the kingdom of heaven, preparing to run down the path to greet us, to embrace us, never to let us go again. I mentioned at the start that each of us have entered the church today as different people than those whom we were two years ago. But really, we truly became different people when Jesus left the doorway of his tomb. In that moment, we were transformed in that instant, God's own spirit filled our lungs afresh and we breathed more freely, as if for the first time, ready to one day breathe effortlessly in the new creation that lies ahead of us. And so today, as we remain surrounded by real pain and tragedy, we lament, but we do not despair. As this dreadful disease remains present in our lives, and many other calamities plague our world today. We continue to grieve, but our grief can no longer overcome us. Suffering put Jesus into the grave, but love brought him out of the tomb. And in the unconquerable love of God, we have the greatest hope. 
We can journey on together in faith and confidence as people of the resurrection. Later on Easter Sunday, two men were on a journey to a village called Emmaus. They were disciples of Jesus and they plodded along the road with downcast, mournful faces. The two men were trying to make sense of all that had happened when they noticed that a third man was walking beside them. What are you discussing together as you walk along, the man asked. Surprised, the disciples responded, Are you the only one who's not heard what's happened in Jerusalem over the past few days? We're talking about Jesus of Nazareth, the one whom we had hoped would redeem Israel. He died three days ago after being sentenced to death by crucifixion. As the three men continued on, the disciples offered their new companion shelter for the night in Emmaus. As they sat down to eat though, the man took a piece of bread, broke it and gave thanks. Then he gave it to the, the two disciples. In this moment, their eyes were opened and they saw that Jesus sat before them again, truly alive in body. The rumor was true, Jesus had risen. We do not hear anything about these two disciples again in the New Testament. But due to the fact that Emmaus was a very small settlement, we can assume that they returned to their journey along the road soon after their encounter with Jesus. I think we can also assume that they did not continue on with the same despairing faces and sorrowful thoughts. Even though as disciples of Jesus at this time, their journey may well have taken them onwards towards a suffering of their own. Shortly our time together this morning will come to an end and we will depart from this place. Rather powerfully, we will also exit through a different door to the one in which we entered. We will then rejoin the road as we journey on. As we do so though, may our hearts and minds be transformed. As we remember that the events, as we remember the events that have brought us to this point, as we remember how our God met with us in our suffering, in the greatest depths of sin and sorrow, and how through his only son, he died in a place upon a cross. And as we continue also to hold in our minds the knowledge that Jesus remains with us now in these final days, in these days of grief and disease, let us hold fast to the truth that they too shall pass. Jesus is risen. A new era has begun. A new creation now awaits us. And although we are not quite there yet, these are still days of hope, of life, freedom and beauty because of the cross and the empty tomb. Let us therefore live like the kingdom of heaven is near. Let us follow the example of the apostles when they heard the news, when they saw Jesus with their own eyes, as we put our fear behind us and journey on in faith and hope. Amen. During our time of intercession in the spaces of quiet, there will be time for you to offer your own prayers. Let us pray. Jesus of Nazareth, risen and exalted one, this morning we recall the words of David in the Psalms. Though the cords of death encompassed me, the torrents of destruction assailed me, the cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. O long-awaited Jesus, on the day of your resurrection, you journeyed with the disciples along the Emmaus Road. You revealed to them all that the scriptures had said concerning you, and your followers found new understanding about the faithful and ancient God of Israel who has fulfilled all his promises and the covenant he had made. You broke bread with them and their eyes were opened to who you are. 
You return to those who had abandoned you, and you love those who had felt shame, doubt, and fear. You restored them to participate in your mission to the world. Thank you that the same forgiveness and mercy is ours this morning. As we worship together, reveal yourself to us afresh. Make us open to receive your word and give us faith to confess that you are the Lord, the risen one. May the news of your resurrection this day not cause us to ignore our own or the suffering of others, but give us the courage to face all things. Strengthen us, Lord Jesus, for we are tired and the journey is long. We pray this morning for all who mourn, that they may not be overwhelmed by their grief. We pray for those who live with the impacts of climate change and long for all things to be restored. Equip us to respond and not be overwhelmed by fear or remain unwilling to change. We pray for those struggling and doubting their faith. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. We pray for those trembling and afraid that they may receive the great news of this resurrection day and find your peace. We pray for those in need of healing. We lift especially our sister Brenda before you this morning and ask for your continual restoring of her as she recovers in hospital from the heart attack that she suffered this week. Protect her and be with her family that they might not be overwhelmed by worry or fear. We pray for ourselves and for your whole church that we may witness to the good news that you have entrusted to us. We thank you for the many Christians who've gone before us and your spirit that guides us onwards. As the disciples had to, enable us to lay down our preconceptions, judgments, ideologies, and all that holds us back from encountering you fully. Give us understanding as we read your word together that we may know you more fully and love you more dearly so as to follow in your ways. And we pray for your world. As many talk of rebuilding a new future, may your life, death and resurrection inspire and equip us to understand the values of your coming kingdom that we may live in line with those of justice, peace, humility, and compassion. With the hope of the resurrection before us, your faithful promises behind us, and the spirit with us today, grant us the faith to pray with Paul in his letter to the church in Rome. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger or sword? I am sure that neither death nor life, angels nor rulers, nor things present, things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, risen and exalted one, we cast our burdens onto you this day that we may receive hope in you. And we say together the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.